Hey guys, it's John from Two Brothers. I got in touch with Buddy RC and asked them to send over the OMP Super Decathlon 55 inch, and they sent it out to me super quick. I've personally flown in a Satabria, which is pretty similar to the Decathlon, so I was excited to try this no frills plug and play airframe out. I replaced the stock Sunny Sky 40 amp ESC for a 60 amp Avian to use with a spare AR631 for voltage telemetry and thrust reverse. The stock ESC is totally fine, but if you want voltage telemetry on an AR631, you need an Avian. I also flew it on a 12x6 propeller for a 4S setup using SMC 3600 high voltage batteries. With the CG where the red arrow is on screen, it was really responsive. I would personally suggest placing your CG where the green arrow is if you're not used to how sensitive the pitch response will be. First impressions were that it's super touchy. Jeez, it was way touchier than I expected. With 150% rates, the servo travel is insane. It took me a bit of getting used to before I could confidently fly it. The maiden that you see here was super short, long enough to realize that I had to bump the expo from 50% to 70% in order to have some smoothness on the ground and while flying it. But before landing to adjust it, I figured why not explore the acro potential a little, and it didn't disappoint. Even with how touchy it is with the 150% rates and 50% expo, it landed well. But I quickly discovered that trying to wheel land results in bouncing. Your best bet to avoid it is to three-point it every time. It's not as impressive as a wheel landing, but it doesn't bounce. Bouncing is unfortunately a fact of life with the Super Decathlon, and I'd go as far as to say that I wouldn't even bother trying to wheel land it. The suspension is stiff, three-point it all the way. It almost never bounces when you do this, and it looks great dropping it in on all three. You could try a band-aid fix like new wheels, but it's probably just the stiff struts causing this issue. Something to be aware of for pavement pilots, but highly unlikely to be any issue on grass. On takeoff, I'd recommend lifting off in 3-point with 4S. The heavier battery makes it a little squirrelier on the ground, so it's not terribly easy to take off on the mains. Hold some gentle back elevator pressure as you throttle up, and it'll take off easily though. If you're on 3S, wheel takeoffs are super easy. The lighter weight makes it less touchy on the ground, so the plane tracks straighter with less rudder input. To help overcome some of the adverse yaw, I programmed in 30% aileron differential. You need to have dual ailerons set up for this to work. It's subtle, but definitely flies better like this. The Decathlon comes with a 3S and 4S compatible power system. The motor doesn't have to be swapped, but the prop does. 4S requires a 12x6 prop, 3S requires the 13x7 that it ships with. What you'll enjoy flying is really up to you, but higher energy tumbles and crazier flying in general is possible on the 4S power setup. It basically does anything you tell it to do. The only thing that it won't do is a knife edge spin, or if it's capable of it, maybe I just suffer from a skill issue. 4S Acro is insanely good. The weight of the SMC 3600 packs give it enough mass to really punch through the air and make a presence in the sky without being too susceptible to accelerated stalls while maneuvering. This is some of the most fun I've had flying anything. It's not as precise as my PA Katana, but it's still a hell of a lot of fun to fly. It hovers really well, exceptionally well even. I mean, just look at it. It sits there happily, eating up all of this battery. The hovering is really stable, which is what I've come to expect from high wing planes. It torque rolls well too, even on 3S, which you're seeing now. Even on 3S, it can punch out of a hover, and I can't think of any aircraft that I've owned that can hover on three cells. It really is just that good, and this isn't a light 3S pack either. It was hovered on a 3200 3S Spectrum and a 3500 3S Helios pack. Let's get into the downsides, but before I do, I know Buddy RC sent this over to me to review, and some people are always skeptical that you're shilling the airplane to them by talking it up. But let's be real here, we're in an age where the biggest nitpick most people have is I don't like the price or the look of the plane. And almost every one of these aircraft are exceptionally well made, so I'm giving you my actual viewpoint on this plane just like I do with anything that I fly. Perhaps not always from the viewpoint of someone who's bought it, but rather from the viewpoint of someone who's put quite a few packs through it and had quite a bit of fun doing it. 
And the biggest downside that I can think of right now is the goddamn splinters that I got in my hands while I was working on the plane. And I'm not even joking, it leaves itchy splinters in your fingers if your hands touch the carbon reinforcement plates or the internal wood frame. This isn't a big deal until you try to go to bed later on and realize that your hands are itchy anytime they touch the bed sheets. I'd suggest wearing latex gloves while working on it to set it up because I still have a few of these splinters while I'm typing up the script to read back for the vid, and it's seriously annoying. The landing gear bouncing that I mentioned earlier is a definite downside to consider too. Such is life when the model comes with stiff aluminum gear. You could try Dubro low bounce wheels, but I don't think they would do much here. Even light touchdowns with good technique still resulted in a bounce. It just seems to be par for the course with this particular airframe. Those are really the only issues that I ran into with it, so I want to cover the upsides too, because there's a ton of them. The agility on the Super Decathlon is only limited by your imagination. Flat spins are a little nose heavy with a neutral CG, but it still looks great. You really can just whip it around like it's a purpose-built 3D aircraft. OMP knocked it out of the park with this bird. It's so locked in and just does anything short of a KE spin. That's also my other gripe, but not all airframes can do them, so I can't hold that against it. Even the stall recovery isn't hard. On three cells, it just gently stalls like a parachute, spiraling down toward the ground very slowly. Although you can put it into a nasty accelerated stall if you're not smooth with your elevator input and bank angle. This is something that I've covered in other Two Brothers videos, but it definitely applies here too, so be careful when maneuvering while banking and yanking. It does inverted harriers solidly with no hint of wing rocking, and you can make it perform point rolls that are crisp with no hesitation. If you add rudder while rolling, the plane increases its roll rate by 200% and becomes a pinwheel in the sky. The flight characteristics in general are really nice. With the AS3X gyro doing some minimal corrections, it tracks exceptionally well in the sky. Flight-wise, it's just solid. I can't say enough good things about it, so with that in mind, let's hop into the review. I'm giving this one a very special review score of 8.75. A quarter of a point was deducted to account for the 25 splinters in my fingers, and a full point was deducted because it bounces on paved runways. If you get the OMP Super Decathlon, I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy it. It's not a plane for beginners, but it's not hard to fly either. If you want your own Super Decathlon, consider picking it up via the link in the description. We really appreciate each and every one of you who chooses to buy through our links. You don't owe us anything, but we truly do value you and your support. Hop on Discord with us and let us know what you thought of this vid, and maybe drop a comment down below. See you guys next time.